Welcome everybody to Jordan Hare Stadium, Pat Dye Field. Right after A Day, I'm Mike Savannah, sports editor of the Open Lake Auburn News, Colin Mick, Auburn University, beat writer for the OA News. We'll try to yell over the track that is cutting the grass. Colin talked loud, I know it's tough for him. <laughs> so, uh, A Day, uh, what you expecting? Another exciting A Day in the books. Uh, yeah, more or less what I expected. A lot of walk on running backs whose names we will probably never hear again. Uh, a lot of passing, you know, Cody Burns, Chris Todd both had their moments, both had their bad moments. Uh, I thought Robert Dunn offensively was a great day. Uh, Auburn's defense started pretty good and, and, and tailed off as the offense sort of hit its stride. But, you know, all in all, a lot going on in A day and, and certainly a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Uh, Cody Burns, Chris Todd split top to one. I guess the co number one starter right now. Uh, Cody came out and looked good. Took Todd a little bit, right. kept going, and once he once he started getting getting in the groove, he looked good as well. What are you impressed? You know what we saw today is what we've been seeing throughout practice, and uh, you know that's Cody is you know not as consistent a passer. He's so dynamic with the ball in his hands as Tony Franklin loves to point out. Todd, uh, you know, obviously not as gifted with the feet, but he has the touch on the arm. Uh, today was probably as rough a day as, as Chris Todd has had, especially in that first quarter. But I thought he was good. You know, I, I still think. Uh, when all said and done, that Todd may have the edge with his experience in the offense. The biggest thing with Chris Todd talking to coaches and talking to his teammates is he always throws to the right guy. Even when, when there's two guys open, he picks the right one. And that's a skill that's hard for quarterbacks to learn. Chris Todd's been in this offense since the eighth grade, and it's something that he's been asking. Running the football, I'm, Auburn did not run it today as much as they will probably run it or much as they expect to run it. Today they came in one to put pressure on the quarterbacks. Uh, there was a situation down on the goal line where they – Abandoned the run right. in an SEC game or in a regular season game, they probably would have, you know, pounded it in there. They wanted to put pressure on the quarterbacks. But what about the running game? We didn't see Lester. We saw Ben Tate had two carries. He Barely, scored twice. Right. Um, we saw a lot of the young guys. The running game with an offense like this is the running game. Does it have to be worked on? You know, I think they want to work on it. I think the thing is, until they've decided who the quarterback is, they've got to spend most of their time figuring that out, working those guys, getting them the experience. I think they know certainly what Brad Lester, a fifth-year senior, has done. Spring is a four fifth-year seniors. Ben Tate, you know, he's been around. He's got logged a lot of carries in two seasons. He's going to be a junior this year. You know, I think that they know what those guys can do. They know that the offensive line can run blocks they did last year. They wanted to spend a lot of time on the, the passing elements of the spread offense. You're absolutely right. If, there was any, it was, if it was any opponent but Auburn White out there, they would have run it on the one-yard line. But they decided to work on their rollout game and obviously didn't quite didn't work, work in that out. situation. It worked out well. Defensively, real quick, anybody catch your eye on the defensive side of the football? I thought Sinderic Marks had a big day. Uh, I was impressed with Josh Bynes with the second team defense. He was one of the few guys I thought who played really well in the second team defense. Uh, Aaron Savage had his moments at quarterback. He's been one of the faster riders in the spring since moving from St. Nick Corner. Uh, I think uh, those three guys are all guys who are going to contribute next year, and I thought they had a good start to it today. Spring practice, there's one more practice Wednesday, but this pretty much wraps up spring practice uh, for the most part. What's the schedule like for Auburn, and, and, and when, when will we get to it? You'll, next time you'll see them on the practice field, I mean, they'll be here Wednesday at Jordan Air Stadium for a half, a half scrimmage with probably about 70, 80 plays. Uh, and until then, uh, the first week of August, uh, is preseason some practice, certainly. Between now and then, they'll be doing passing drills on the practice field. They'll be doing things without coaches' presence. And that is when, as you know, you know, the senior leadership has to step up. Guys like Chris Todd, like Cody Burns, who's a youngster, who will be around to provide leadership. Rod Smith, James Swinton, offense and defense guys need to prove that they can do it without coaches yelling at them, without a formal practice situation, because there's a lot to be done between now and the first day of fall practice, August 1st or 2nd. August 1st or 2nd, it'll be here before you know it, and we'll be back on Auburn versus AnnoAnow.com to give you highlights throughout the rest of the recap the spring, the spring and the summer. It's the whole season. I mean, it's right here. It's a beautiful thing. I, I, I don't know how you cannot think it's a beautiful Keep coming thing. back and you'll get more it, of this. What else do we need to say? Turn off your computers now. All right, this is Mike Sabetitz, Colin Mickle. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.